this shirt just came in today. Um, I'm so happy now. I was waiting on this, and I was waiting on my tax form from my Meyer, but I got one of my tax forms back. Um, my one tax form that I got back was from a job that I hated last year, McDonald's, but I had only worked for a couple of days there last year, so I got that one back. And, my job, and don't ever work for McDonald's. I said, I w it's not a job that I wanted, but obviously I got set up with some program that put me there, and they knew I hated it, so eventually I ended up leaving after a year. But now I'm at Meyer, and I actually seem to like Meyer better. Um, so now I'm waiting on my Meyer tax form, but let's get to the story that we're actually all, um, um, waiting to hear about here. Now, um, now, even though it's been three days since Biden was sworn in, and people have been talking about his speech, and they're talking about what he's been doing, he's, un he's undone, he, um, basically, he canceled the Keystone Pipeline, and he canceled, um, Pumpkin Tits's border wall, because the border wall wasn't going to be necessary, and the Keystone Pipeline was an actual failure that Pumpkin Tits had put through. It didn't do well at all. They, they He put the pipeline down and then it burst after a few weeks or something like that. So it didn't last long on that part. But but words will matter. And on Wednesday when Joe Biden was sworn in, the first challenge of what will surely be a challenge in presidency, his inaugural address arrived in the wake of a, tempo, of, of a tempestuous a bitter squatter that has, left, um, that has left the nation miserably divided with over 400,000 dead. From an out-of-control pandemic with jobs declining and with democracy itself having recently been assaulted by a frenzied mob of insurrectionists. For the Americans, old Inauguration Day has a, scare, has, a, has a sacredness about it. The ceremony of transfer of power is, an also, is awesome in every sense. And this day lies at the core of our national, um, of our national project. The people chose their leader for a discrete, team, for a scre discrete term of four years allowing in most cases for a second four years in office. In his first inaugural address, Ronald Reagan began his speech by musing on the peaceful transfer of power as nothing less than a miracle. Reagan had turned to face the, the to face the President Jimmy Carter, whom he just defeated, and said, Mr. President, I want our fellow citizens to know how much you did carry on this tradition. By your graciousness, cooperation, and the transition power, you have you have shown a watching world that we are that we are a united people that's pledged to maintaining the political system which guarantees individual liberty to a greater degree than any other and i thank you and your people for all your help in maintaining the in the continuity which is the bulwark of a republic but cameras had closed in on jimmy carter who who looked genuinely moved but reagan paused letting the words sink in the transfer of power is a key ritual of our democracy, and it's been 152 years since the president has declined to attend the inauguration of his successor, and that was in the wake of a deadly civil war. And by his refusal to attend the inauguration, Pumpkin Tits now joins Andrew Johnson and two others in, the, in this company of shame. Even Pumpkin Tits in 2017 gestured um, great, gratefully to Obama before almost immediately trashing him and his administration, summoning a vision of rusted out factories scattered like tombstones across the landscape, summoning na a nation riddled with crime and gangs and drugs, declaring that this American car car um, carnage stops right here and stops right now. Obama did not smile. Biden's speech today was one of, of, of what they call tempered optimism. He didn't tell us that happy days are here again, but he observed that we celebrate the triumph not of a candidate but of a cause, the cause of democracy. My favorite sense is followed. We've learned again um, that democracy is precious and democracy is fragile, and at this hour, my friends, democracy has prevailed. Everything else fell naturally from this assertion as Biden went straight to the violence that has recently shaken the Capitol's very foundation, and sadly, this isn't a metaphor. Um, Biden rightfully challenged all of us, um, as John F. Kennedy did in 1961, over the, um, um, but over the centuries through storm and strife and, and in peace and in war. And we've come so far, he said, but we still have far to go as we push forward through this dark winter. This is indeed the winter of our discontent, reminiscent of Franklin Roosevelt's winter of 1933 and the throes of the Great Depression, when he suggested that only a foolishly optimist would deny the dark realities that had consumed a nation. Biden didn't, didn't mince his words naming the pandemic and the history of racial injustice and the environmental crisis and the rise of political extremism and white supremacy as specific dire problems that we must confront. He called for unity, and the word permeate, and this word permeates his speech. Of course, every, every sensible president in his, inaugural, in his inaugural, in inaugural address returns to Abraham Lincoln, our greatest speechmaker. Biden cites the Emanci Emancipation Proclamation, where Lincoln, where Lincoln declared, my whole soul is in it. Biden, co Biden coops this statement saying, my whole soul is in it. By, by it, he means uniting our nation at a time when racism, nativ 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 nativism, and fear and demonization have torn us apart. Or demonization, sorry. One, one could hardly not see an invisible finger pointing at, pointing at pumpkin tits. 
Yet Biden wisely didn't waste his breath on pumpkin tits. He noted that the ba that the battle is perennial, and the racial divisions that plague us go back centuries into this into this country. Um, Biden lifted our eyes beyond the last four years, saying that politics doesn't have to be a raging fire that scours the earth. Um, that we um, but we must reject the culture in which facts um, which facts themselves are eliminated and even manufactured. And to be sure, Biden is the great sympathizer, and he learned. And he and he leaned into that role here. I understand that many of my fellow Americans view the few the that view the future with fear and tri and trepidation. Jobs and health care lie at the center of that anxiety, and he made it clear that he understands all of this. And with Biden, the or the aura of caring, of deep sincerity, is is palpable. But we know that he's been that what he's been through with horrendous family tragedies and the sadness. Illuminates the man now, and he doesn't shrink from the challenge ahead of us. But we're but we are entering what we may be, what may be the toughest and deadliest period of the virus, and perhaps his most poetic moment. Biden intoned, "We may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning." And this alludes mainly to Psalm 30 in the Bible. But one cannot hear an echo of Reagan's morning in America, and such hopelessness is essential in any good inaugural speech, even in the hard times. Biden's inaugural speech was in no it was in retrospect a balancing act that succeeded admirably and speaking honest and speaking honesty about the full uh, about the multifaceted crisis at hand while delivering a full measure of optimism he wants to return us to an American to America that's marked by decency and dignity we never expected Biden we never expected Biden or as we must call him now President Biden because he's now president to change the world with a single address but putting the right words in the right order matters. I think Biden is, has inspired us, inviting us to set aside our differences as a nation, even as he rose to speak behind a bulletproof barrier with 25,000 troops guarding him and his guest. A sad testament to where we've come as a nation in just a few short hours. Yep. Yeah.